Hi once again. Welcome to episode 809. <laughs> Sounds weird saying that. Episode 809. And the topic today is about, um, well, the pain of waiting. The topic today is stop waiting for them to change to make you feel better. It's a losing game. So I'll explain that more clearly in a moment because I'm still collecting my thoughts on it to make it clear. Um, hi, Diane. I see my broadcast. By the way, this is my Facebook Live, and I'll get to more about that in a minute. Um, so I'm wondering who I'm talking to if you're watching it somewhere else. There, this is showing up on my Facebook Live. So, okay. Before I jump in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and I can get going on this topic. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby. In case you hadn't seen that, seen my name anywhere on this broadcast, <laughs> welcome to my talk. I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationship expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, change your life about love and relationships. And yes, I'm very biased. Um, I help women create women find and create balance in love, life, and relationships. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what informs my work with women, and also inspired these talks over two and a half years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today we're episode 809, as I mentioned, 809. So that's a couple of years worth of talks, certainly. And the topic today is about don't wait for them to change, because it's a losing game. It's not that, and, and let me, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. So let me give you framing for that to understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those places where you're in a relationship and you put up with behavior you don't like, way past the point of sanity. Most of us do this, by the way. I've done it myself, and I've, and I've also had my ex-girlfriend do it to me because I didn't change. So I know the pain of it. I also know the experience of delivering it. And so I want to break it down to explain what's happening and what you can do differently. And also, how you can be in less pain. Sound good? So first of all, what's happening is we get into relationships with people, and this works both ways, men and women, gay, straight, whatever it is, where we make sometimes assumptions about the other person that aren't true. For example, we may have assumptions about the other person that they're going to be the perfect partner, treat us the right way, and it's going to go great. But they have a certain habit or habits or patterns that you don't enjoy. Let you think about that for a second. I'm just thinking how to go to the next piece. If you do that and you don't do anything about changing it, or you don't walk away, you don't interse intercede, but you wait for them to change, it's basically worse than waiting for paint to dry. It never will dry. It's, an, it's an, a permanent condition because the thing is, first of all, if you don't stand up for yourself and speak to them about what's not working, they will not change because they won't be aware of the fact that they need to change for you, or at least have a conversation with you. Secondly, if you're not willing to stand up for yourself, you're becoming very much in a codependent mindset. And I've talked about codependency many, many times. Was you in a place though where you're not taking responsibility for your own self-love, self-support, and happiness. Putting up with them not changing, waiting for them to change, which is the same thing, is a painful experience that doesn't give you anything you really want. When you learn, when you remember, when you choose, to stand up for yourself is the first step to getting what you really want. Well, it's one of the steps, not the only step, it's one of the first steps. And the thing about this being in the context of where you're putting up with somebody is I know people who've been in relationships, sometimes marriages, for 10, 20, 30 years, where that waiting for them to change started a year after they got married. If you're in a relationship or have been in relationships where you were waiting and waiting and waiting for them to change to be the right person so you can feel happy again, you may realize by now how ineffective that is. And frankly, how undermining of your own self-esteem it is. Because when you choose to stay in that cycle of waiting, 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 waiting for them to change, for you to be happy, you're going to feel less and less, um, well, you'll feel more and more diminished and less and less fulfilled. That's a very better way of putting it. And that's a dance we play in. And for some people in relationships, this happened many times. And the challenge is, one of the challenges, is that you may not even know you're doing this because it's happened gradually over years. You may have experienced being in a relationship where you look back over the past three, four, five years of the relationship and you wonder, well, how did I get here? This is one of the ways it happens. Where you're waiting for something to change because you're not taking proactive action and it never does. It stays the same. It ends up being in this um, timeless bubble almost. Nothing gets changed. So my, my 
suggestion, reminder, encouragement, um, guidance for you is if you're in that situation, here's some keys to change your environment, change your situation, change your scenario. Change your scenario. First of all is, it's gonna sound simplistic, is stand up for yourself. That may mean one of several things, I get to those in a second, but by standing up for yourself, you're taking the first action to declare what you want, which may or may not be with the person you're with. So one of those things about standing up, standing up for yourself is to be willing to take the action to either walk away or stand for what you want that they may walk away from. And this is the thing. You may be in a place where you feel that being in a relationship, not changing anything, not creating ripples, not stirring the pot, not, not uh, rocking the boat, so to speak, as using metaphors I can pull out of my head, will give you the position where safety will be staying the same. And for some people, staying safe in a situation that doesn't work is preferable to risking being out of that situation to have what they really want. As backwards as that sounds. For some people, being in a relationship where maybe there's the money is there to take care of the family and the house and everything else, that you'd rather put up with the pain of that relationship not changing than lose all those possibilities. You're sacrificing your happiness for a sense, perhaps false sense, of safety and security. This is a painful choice, I understand. But ultimately, if you don't choose for yourself, you'll lose. Simple as that. You may not lose everything in terms of that security safety bubble you think you're creating for yourself, but you'll lose sense of self. You'll lose support of yourself. You'll lose the ability to trust yourself because you've given up that right to stay where you think it's the right place to be. For some people, it's out of duty, out of discipline, out of commitment to say, I'm going to stay in this relationship no matter how painful it is because eventually they'll change and I'll be okay. This is the belief that some people run in their mindset, especially those who've been together several decades, some decades, not say several, but a few decades. This wiring, this programming we believe, some of us, taken, some of us have taken it on when we're very young. I, I know, coming from my own family dynamics, the parents took it together almost 60 years until my mother passed away, I did have a belief in myself that I wouldn't be able to commit to a relationship unless it was gonna be for life because that's what the model was. Come hell high waters, I basically, to be honest, didn't date much when I was younger because when I was really young because I thought that I wouldn't find the right person because I didn't want to go through that feeling of not being able to change anything or be able to walk away from anything because the rules were I couldn't do that that's what was in here it wasn't society's rules it was my rules and that's the thing we have our own rules in our head we take on when we're very young we're very impressionable in principle and we are a clean slate when we come in so we take on the world around us as I mentioned before by experiencing what's out there because of the big tall people which we think of as God in some way and I'm being um, I'm not being her heretic about it. I'm saying basically we think they're the ones that run the world because they're the ones that feed us and take care of us we think what they do is right so we believe that's the way it should be so if you look later on at your parents and see one of them sitting in a place where they're on hold waiting for the other person to change and they never do you'll feel that pain and then you may experience it yourself in your own relationships so the first thing is being able to stand up for what you want. Well, actually, the first one is becoming aware of what's happening. The second piece is standing up for what you want. The third piece is to create, I want to say create the change, but create the invitation to change, which could be one of two ways. One of which is they may change because you need them to and they will step up because you've asked them to versus waiting for them to do it, actually having a conversation, which is possible. You can have a conversation with that partner who's not willing, who hasn't changed yet, but when you talk to them, they go, oh yes, of course I'll change. That's possible. Not as often as you think, but it's possible. Secondly, well, this is part two of the other point. I've lost track of the points already. Another option is that basically they don't listen to you or don't change or say, no, I'm not gonna do that. And you get to decide if you wanna put up with that or walk away. And for some of you, the understanding is that your self-esteem requires you to walk away. Choice. The other option is, is that they become so vehement about their position that you know you have no choice but to leave because you will not get what you want from them. And they've declared it so that they're never gonna change. And that frankly is a, um, I say it in a simple way, is a massive rift that can happen in relationships. There are relationships that end this way because there's such a difference between the two people and because neither one of them is willing to come to a place of saying, can we work this out to a level of um, respect that you can walk away. They end up with court cases. This is, where, this is where a lot of the attorneys make their money in divorce court because they're tied up into this paradigm where the belief 
is that there's no reconciliation available. That the againstness, the fight that's between the two partners is so catastrophic that there's no way back to come back together again. And this is frankly for me why I talk about this a lot because I really want to help people understand that you have choice. You always have choice. And it may be that you've got to let go of position to have that understanding. But the thing is, when you stand up for yourself and you take clear of what your belief is true and you, again, respect yourself, that you don't settle, but you do understand. And that understanding can create an ability to have a sense of um, understanding, conversation and communication. So this is a powerful, pivotal piece. And when you understand the... Um, how do I say this? When you understand... The freedom you have when you get to choose for yourself and stand up for yourself is when things can change for you. This is um, painful for some people to hear, I know. But it's pivotal for people to know this too, because when you have the understanding of what's going on, when you actually know what's really happening, then life will change the way you want it to. So my invitation to you is to look at your relationship, if you're in a relationship, by the way, take a look at this and see if this is true for you. If your relationship's going out great and everything's understanding, and there's, there's communication, understanding, connection, intimacy, working together then it's great if you have a problem with this then get some help maybe you need a marriage counsellor maybe you want to see a therapist maybe you want to see a mediator to see where things work out if you're single and you've had the experience before that's when we can talk I don't work with couples I work with single just to be clear I don't work, I'm not a therapist or a, or a mediator but if you're single and you want to work through some of your blocks that make it hard to be able to ask for what you want I can help you with that this is a big piece of the puzzle is to understand do you have the power? Do you have the willingness? Do you know what you want? And can you ask for it? So my work with a lot of my clients is helping them understand their rights, their beliefs, their wants are valid. So they can have what they want. So I'm going to put some links in the comments for you to check out, which will be a link to have a conversation with me, as well as my book. I did mention the self-love piece, so that will be in the comments too. So there's going to be three links in the comments, just so you know, ahead of time. My book, The Self-Love Practice, and a reach out for conversation with me. I'll put those in the links. I'll put those in the comments after I sign off. I hope this is making some sense to you. This is a piece of the puzzle that's important to understand when you're in a relationship, but also after a relationship, what you can do next. You don't want to keep repeating the cycle in the next relationship because that's what we do. If we don't change, then the relationship becomes the same again and again and again and again. You don't want that, I'm sure. Get the help you need, get support, whether it's from me or somebody else. Change your life so you can have what you want. That's my reminder. A couple of quick things. This is my Facebook Live, in case you haven't seen me before. You can watch me every day at 5, 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. Um, that's my name in case you haven't seen that. Somewhere on, the, on this broadcast, there should be a, a three dots you can click on to get more information, which you can click on get notified when I go live. That way you'll catch me live when I go live every day. Seven days a week, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. The replays are on my business page, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page and you can find him there. Or watch me on YouTube. On YouTube, it's a Barry, is, the channel is Barry Selby, as I mentioned, which is all my social media. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe to my page. I want to boot up my subscriptions because I've got like 20. <laughs> so I welcome you subscribing to my, my, business, my uh, YouTube channel and you can watch, find all my replays there. This is my commitment to serve every day, to express, to inspire, to remind you of the possibility of love and relationship that can help you have what you want. Every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, I invite you to join me. If you have any questions, thoughts about this broadcast, please put them below. I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I'll put links in the comments you can check out for your own self-support, self-love and getting what you want. And if you want to get help, you can either message me or click on one of the links. I always invite you to take care of yourself because that's my mission to support you and take care of yourself. But you've got to do the work yourself. I do this every day, as I mentioned. So I invite you to come join me again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I thank you for watching this one. Comments, questions can be posted. I'll respond when I sign off. And as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.